Hello, Internet. Today's project is a challenge. The challenge is to reverse engineer a compact stowable wall desk that I saw on the Internet and then actually construct it. The original project was designed by Robert Van Embrix of the Netherlands. His website URL is provided in this video's description. The mystery is how to achieve the desk's motion and curvilinear appearance from rigid straight parts. My first instinct was there is a flexible rod in the project, but that turned out to be wrong. Instead, the motion of the desk slides on a rigid 3 8 inch steel rod. Here we see the design process of the desk in Fusion 360. After I laid out the desk top, I started making the slats. There are a total of 30 slats, 15 on the left and an identical set of 15 on the right. Here we see the 15 slats going in on the left and I just designed the left side because all the slats on the right are identical. One of the neat capabilities of Fusion 360 is its ability to model motion in design using joints. Each of the slats has two joints in the model. At the bottom of each slat where it connects to the desktop is a revolving joint and in the middle of each slat where it meets the rod is a joint type known as pin slot. We'll see that closer in a minute. Here I'm showing the manipulation of the model in Fusion attempting to confirm that the motion of the project would be as designed in Robert Van Embrick's original concept. Each slat has a slot routed in it and here we see the slot in the 15th slat and at the bottom of the slot we see the steel rod that rides in the slot and that's where the uh, uh, pin slot joint is and here we kind of see the operation of that pin slot joint with the rod riding in the slot. I found it remarkable how well the Fusion 360 model predicted the actual motion of the project with these simple revolution and pin slot joints. Fusion 360 was also used to create tool paths for CNC machining of the parts for the projects. Here is a simulation of the path used to cut the outline of the desktop. And here is a simulation of a representative tool path for a slot in a slat. A separate tool path had to be created and especially designed for each of the 15 slats. Project construction starts with stock preparation and here we're jointing the poplar stock and planing it to final thickness which is 13 sixteenths of an inch. A table saw is used to cut slats to uh, width. Final width is 1.3 inches. The original stock used was six quarter poplar so we had plenty of room to plane and joint out any curvature in the stock. Here is the router bit used to cut slots in the stock used for the desktop to receive splines that were used to help align the parts for gluing up. Here 
Here is the making of the spline material cut from 1 8 inch masonite. And here is a dry fit of the upper part of the desktop, the splines going in between the poplar parts of the desktop. The upper half and lower half of the desktop were glued up separately and put through the planer to even them out. Here the two halves of the desktop are being glued together and clamped. Machining of the desktop was done on the CNC. Here the cutting is being done by a quarter inch end mill. Handwork with a chisel was required to square up the rounded areas left by the end mill on the CNC. Here is after the squaring. And here is before. This little jig was made from a piece of aluminum angle to help precisely locate the screw holes for all of the hinges. Eight edges of each of the 30 slats were given a 1 8 inch roundover on the router table. The slots in the slats were routed on the CNC using a quarter inch end mill. The slot dimensions were different for each slat, so a separate tool path had to be created for each one separately. After all the machining was done, each part received three coats of Armar Seal hand applied. And here are the 30 slats and the desktop after the finish was applied.
which of the 30 hinges are first applied to the desktop. Inch and a quarter number four stainless steel screws were used. The aluminum angle jig was also used to precisely locate hinge screws at the ends of the slats. Slats number 1 and number 30 received special hinges at the top to hold blocks that were used to connect the project to the wall. Here the slats are married to the hinges that had been previously installed on the desktop. Here is the installation of the 3 8 inch steel rod through the slot in the slats. I initially placed a stainless steel washer between each slat. This proved to have been a mistake. And this is the very first attempt to operate the desk in real life. In order to give the desk a true test, this temporary test wall was constructed in the shop. It consists of studs on 16 inch centers and half inch drywall. With the first actual operation of the desk, three correctable errors became apparent. The first error was how the desk met the wall at a single sharp point. This was corrected by taking the, off the four middle slats and cutting them off at a sharp angle that would meet the wall flat. And felt pads were added to cushion the desk against the wall. The second error was the finger hole in the desktop was too small. To locate the center for correcting this, I made this little fixture to locate the center that would allow me to use the CNC to enlarge the finger hole. The third error was the washers on the steel rod that were placed in between the slats. It turned out that as the rod had to move up and down between the slats, the washers created too much friction and prevented smooth operation. To correct this, I removed the washers and replaced them with these small pieces of wood that were of equal thickness to maintain the slat separation. It fascinates me how Van Embrick's design managed to combine stiff rectilinear pieces 
to create a pleasing, moving, curvilinear object. Here it is once again in slow-mo. watching.